Welcome to the Astrophysics channel. This tutorial will show you how to set up and use PhD guiding software with your astrophysics mount, including optimizing PhD settings for your specific image system and seeing conditions. Please note this video is for astrophysics mounts with absolute encoders. If you have an AP mount with absolute encoders, such as the Mach 2 or the AP 1100 or 1600 with the absolute encoder option installed, this video is for you. If you have an AP mount without absolute encoders installed, you should instead watch the companion video on setting up PhD for non-encoder mounts. Before you get started, this tutorial assumes you already have some basics in place and properly working. Your astrophysics mount is physically set up and working properly, including telescope installed and balanced, the ability to power up all of your equipment, and a working connection between your mount and your computer, which is typically USB, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi. You have installed the ASCOM software platform, the AP ASCOM driver, and optionally the APCC software. For encoder mounts, you will need ASCOM and pulse guiding as the preferred method for guiding, and we really recommend using APCC software with encoder mounts. You have installed and updated your camera drivers. This is important as PhD software updates are often tied to newer versions of camera drivers and software development kits and may not work properly if you use an older camera driver. You have correctly configured your astrophysics driver and software so you can connect to your mount and control it via ASCOM. You have installed PhD2 software and have confirmed you can connect your equipment. Your guide camera is working and focused, and if using an off-access guider or OAG, it is also par-focal with your imaging camera. Your mount is reasonably well polar aligned. And if you are using APPM for sky modeling, you have your model active. This is true if you are using an all-sky model or a deck arc model. This is not critical, so if you complete this tutorial and find that you accidentally did not enable your model, it should still be fine. This tutorial does not cover any of these topics, so if you need help with these, please look at other videos or contact Astrophysics. You will also need to ensure the software versions you are using are up to date. As of this tutorial, you will want ASCOM Platform version 6.5 Service Pack 1 or later, the AP version 2 ASCOM driver using version 5.40.01 or later, if you are using APCC, we recommend version 1.9.3.1 or later, standard or professional versions. And perhaps most importantly, you want to use PhD version 2.6.11 Dev 1 or later. This version is especially important as it's the first time it introduces features optimized for encoder mounts. Also, as a general point about PhD 2, this guiding software is referred to as PhD, PhD2 or OpenPhD. For our purposes, they all refer to the same application. The download link for PhD is here and in this video's description below. Again, it's worth mentioning you should make sure you have the latest camera drivers installed to ensure compatibility. Last, please note that there is an earlier version of PhD available from Stark Labs. This is a legacy version that was discontinued around 2012 and is no longer supported. The only version you should be using is available from openphdguiding.org. It's also worth mentioning that the current version of PhD is based on Craig Stark's original version, so we all owe a debt of gratitude to Craig for starting the ball rolling. The last thing before we jump into it is some information you will need ahead of time to properly configure PhD. You will need the pixel size of your guide camera expressed in microns or thousandths of a meter. This is typically found on your guide camera's product page. You will need your guide telescope focal length. Make sure to include any optical modifiers such as a reducer or a Barlow lens in your focal length. If you aren't sure how to calculate your focal length, it's often helpful to use an online astronomy FOV calculator. We've included a link to one in the description below. If you're using an off-access guider, the focal length will be your main imaging telescope's focal length. If you are using a separate guide scope, make sure you use the focal length of the guide scope and not the aperture. It's a common mistake to make, so it's worth verifying the focal length of your guide scope before continuing. In this live example, we are accessing a remote telescope setup located at Obstec Observatory in the Atacama Desert in Chile. The system is a plane wave CDK20 20-inch 20 
corrected Dahl Kirkham telescope on an AP1600 mount with absolute encoders installed. The guide camera is a ZWO ASI 174 monochrome camera on a Monster Moag off access guider. This screen is being accessed remotely in real time, so the user interface resolution may be less than ideal, but we felt it was important to demonstrate a live working system for you. Before launching PHD, it's recommended you already have your mount and guide camera powered on and ready to connect via ASCOM. It will simplify entering some of the PHD setup data. Let's go ahead and launch PHD. If you are launching PHD for the very first time, it may prompt you with the first light wizard. Let's go ahead and close this as we will walk through the new profile wizard, which is essentially the same process. Click on the equipment connection button to bring up the equipment profiles window. It may again ask you to use the wizard, which we will dismiss. Under manage profiles, choose new using wizard. These multiple prompts recommending the wizard can be confusing. They all refer to the exact same wizard process. The reason we prefer to use this new profile wizard from this location is because it is the only one that is always available in PHD. The other two are only available when you first launch PHD and later disappear. We recommend always using the wizard for creating your equipment profiles as it helps to avoid common mistakes that people make when configuring their equipment. The first step is to select your guide camera. Choose your guide camera from the driver drop-down list. If your camera is not listed, you likely do not have the correct camera driver installed. Please go back and ensure all necessary software is installed prior to starting this tutorial. When you choose your guide camera, it will ask you if you want to connect to it. Say yes, and it will automatically read the guide camera pixel size. You can verify this information with the pixel size you already wrote down, or if for some reason PHD cannot read the pixel size, you can enter it manually here. Next, enter your guide scope focal length. As mentioned before, if you are using an off-access guider, your imaging telescope focal length should be entered here. In our case, the focal length is 3454 millimeters. You can also specify the binning of the guide camera at this step. In our case, we can see the pixel scale is quite small, so we need to set the camera binning to three to stay above the half arc second minimum PHD requires. Without getting into the technical details, it's important to note that PHD operates best at half arc second or larger pixel scale for accurate centroid calculations. If your pixel scale is above half an arc second, we recommend leaving your camera unbinned at least for now. It's also worth mentioning, if you use two cameras from the same manufacturer, this can cause issues in the new profile wizard. The new profile wizard does not currently allow you to select which camera during the new profile setup. If you have two cameras from the same manufacturer, you should temporarily disconnect your imaging camera and connect only the guide camera. Once you finish the new profile wizard, you can then reconnect your imaging camera. Using two ZWO cameras is a common example of needing this approach. Now click next. For mount, choose Astrophysics GTO V2 mount. It will ask you if your mount is connected, click yes. Your mount will connect and the guide speed will be updated. Note the guide speed shown in PHD is always read only and can only be changed in the ASCOM driver. It cannot be changed in PHD. Astrophysics recommends the guide speed for AP mounts always be left at 1x sidereal time. Now check the box labeled mount has high precision encoders. This changes some default values and behaviors in PHD to be better tuned for encoder mounts. And now click next. If you have an AO unit, you can choose to enable it on this screen. However, for purposes of this introductory tutorial, we do not cover the details of using an AO unit. So we'll just go ahead and click next. Name your profile something meaningful so that you can tell it apart from other profiles you may create in the future. Leave the build dark library option checked and also check auto restore calibration. This option ensures that the calibration you use will be automatically loaded every time you launch the PHD application 
and is one of the benefits of using ASCOM and pulse guiding. Click finish. The build dark library feature will now come up. Building a dark library for your guide camera is important to avoid guiding on hot pixels. You can safely stick with the default values and click start. PHD will prompt you to cover your telescope. You should ensure building a dark library is done at night and with no straight light able to hit the guide camera. In a few minutes, it will finish and prompt you to uncover the guide scope. There's one additional tip if you use an automated rotator. Click the Equipment Connection button and click More Equipment. This will show the additional option to connect your rotator. If you use an automated rotator for framing your targets, this is an essential setting. PHD will use the rotator angle information to adjust its calibration and ensure its guiding is accurate without any user involvement. We will now examine some of PHD's advanced settings to see how it's configured for encoder mounts. We will also change a few other settings to avoid some common problems that can happen when using default values. Open the advanced settings by either clicking on the brain button or choosing it from the guide menu. Advanced settings are divided into five categories as indicated on the tabs above. Click the camera tab. The variable exposure delay is a new feature specifically for encoder mounts. You have the option to enable it and to set a short delay and a long delay. With non-encoder mounts, guiding plays the central role to ensure accurate tracking. With encoder mounts, the encoders do the majority of work for precise tracking and guiding is used sparingly to address the small inconsistencies. PHD's approach is to combine medium length guide exposures of approximately four to six seconds with a delay between each exposures of about four to six seconds. The longer guide exposure helps even out local scene conditions and the delays between exposures ensure guiding is occasional and not interfering with the work of the encoders. This gentle guide correction about once every eight to 12 seconds is sometimes referred to as bump guiding. However, PHD also performs a number of housekeeping tasks where delays between exposures is unnecessary and can cause lost time or possibly even issues. These tasks include calibration, guide star acquisition, and dithering. For these tasks, PHD uses the shorter delay to reduce unnecessary weights and improve responsiveness. Through testing and experimentation specifically with astrophysics encoder mounts, these PHD default settings are an ideal starting point and we're gonna start with using these. Next, click the Algorithm tab. You'll note that PHD defaults to using Low Pass 2 algorithm for encoder mounts for both RA and DEC axis. Low Pass 2 is a form of hysteresis and works well with mounts that need minimal guiding. Aggressiveness settings are moderate, so guide corrections are reasonably applied. Finally, the minimum move value plays an important role in avoiding corrections due to scene conditions. Minimum move values are set later using a guiding assistant run that we will do. You also never want to enable backlash compensation for an encoder mount, so we leave this disabled. Next, click the guiding tab. Here, we will increase the minimum star SNR auto selection to 20. This helps avoid selecting faint guide stars that can result in lost guide star events. Otherwise, PHD has refined the default settings to help avoid other issues such as guiding on hot pixels and enabling multi-star guiding. Go ahead and click the OK button and we are now ready to calibrate the guiding software. Now that we have set up PHD, connected all of our equipment and our mount is tracking, the next step is to calibrate the guider. We choose a baseline guide exposure of four seconds. You may use other guide exposures later to fine tune your guiding, but for now avoid very short or very long guide exposures. The first thing we need to do is slew them out to an ideal sky location, which is typically the intersection of the meridian and the celestial equator. You can use the APCC go to tab to do this.
If for some reason you are unable to use the sky location due to obstructions or other reasons, you can use another part of the sky. In general, you want to calibrate at a sky position that is reasonably high in the sky, say around 45 degrees altitude or more, avoids areas around the poles, and avoid low altitudes near the horizon. Next, click the loop icon and the guide camera will start looping exposures. Next, click auto select star. It's important to know the best guide star may not look like the best choice visually, but PHD will choose one that is best from a data standpoint. If you do not see any guide stars, you can try to adjust the screen contrast slider, but remember, this is just a visual adjustment and does not change the actual data. You may need to go back and recheck your guide camera focus if you are unable to find a guide star. Once you have your guide star selected, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click the green start guiding button. The shift key will cause PHD to start the calibration. PHD will calibrate by moving the star in all four directions, measuring the distance and angle of movement. Although this next detail is not critical, calibration is only measured in one direction on each axis, west and north. It's important to note that it is not required to orient the guide camera to the display axes. PHD can perform a quality calibration at any axis angle. Once PHD is finished calibrating, if it was able to achieve a successful calibration, it will start guiding. If you encounter errors that prevent the calibration from finishing, these should be reviewed and resolved before continuing. It probably goes without saying, but good guiding is dependent on good calibration. A poor calibration will always degrade guiding results, so it's worth taking the time to get it right the first time. Next, we will use the guiding assistant to tune the guiding parameters for your specific seeing condition. Launch the tools guiding assistant. Click OK. The guiding assistant will disable guiding and watch the star position until you click stop. During this time, the guide star may move off the star profile screen or appear to drift dramatically. This is okay, provided it does not lose the guide star. If you do lose the guide star, you will need to start from looping and reacquire the guide star. You only need to run the guiding assistant for just a few minutes. The goal is to get a stable reading so the assistant can recommend minimum move values that avoid guiding in seeing conditions. Note that for encoder mounts, measuring backlash is disabled and should be left this way. After a few minutes have elapsed, click the stop button. Guiding will resume at this point and the guide star will be recentered. The guiding assistant will recommend minimum move values for each axis and may also give additional feedback on polar alignment, recommended exposure times, etc. Accept all the recommendations and close the guiding assistant. Now PHD guiding is fully calibrated and ready for a night session. Because we are using ASCOM and pulse guiding, you can use one calibration for guiding anywhere in the sky. PHD knows your pointing position from the mount and can adjust its guiding parameters accordingly. You can continue to reuse this calibration as long as your guide camera does not shift or rotate position. 